morning uh, with an awesome friend and awesome speaker, uh, Men of Our Conference. Uh, this is my second interview with one of our awesome breakout speakers. And just a, a little testimony that it, he has been a wise voice of counsel in my life. And, uh, and for, shoot, over a year. Um, and and through, a, through a brotherhood called SoulCon. And uh, I know that he will be bringing an awesome message to, to y'all as well. Uh, so we'll welcome this morning, uh, Mr. Brad Houchin. Good morning, Brad. Yeah. Good morning and, and good morning, Men of Valor. So excited to be a part of such an awesome organization. Um, man, seeing the heart of the leaders of this group um, and uh, seeing the growth, seeing the uh, excitement, uh, not to not to go to a men's conference, but to to just strengthen our relationship with Christ through this. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm super pumped. I hated that I missed last year. My, my daughter was, uh, in the process of relocating and, um, uh, well, you know, family, family first. So I, I, I had to move her up to, to New York and miss the conference, but, um, I was able to plan far enough ahead this time. I don't think we're going to have any obstacles. That's awesome. Def definitely looking forward to it. And for selfish reasons. Uh, so uh, looking forward Even to that. finally finally get to <laughs> hug your neck, man. But um, anyway, just tell us a little bit about yourself. You know where you're from, uh, what you do for a living. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So I was actually born in Ardmore. Uh, graduated at a little country school outside of town. Uh, my graduating class was we had 45 in our graduating class, so I was in the top 50. Boom. Um, that's, that's, you know, it, I can claim that for the rest of my life. The largest graduating class for eight years before that, or eight years after that, that I know of, um, most of our graduating classes were a lot smaller. Joined the Marine Corps right out of high school, uh, turned 18 in boot camp, turned 19 in Saudi Arabia, um, served, um, mostly in artillery. Uh, I, um, I was stationed, <laughs> I was stationed right off the bat in 29 Palms, California, and then deployed to the desert from there to, to uh, Saudi, and then came back and got orders and was so pumped to finally be out of the desert, and my orders were for Yuma, Arizona, uh, <laughs> so still more desert, so uh, most of my, mo I ended up in, in Camp Lejeune, but most of my time I was a desert rat in a uh, artillery uh, background, you know, primarily. So yeah, I got out of the Marine Corps, um, went into uh, the civilian world and, and managed a couple different businesses. I was in the paint business for a little bit and then uh, uh, manufactured tires for Michelin. Uh, we have a, we have a uh, uh, facility there in Ardmore that we, we build tires. And so did that for a couple of years and then got on with my current employer, the Chickasaw Nation. And It'll be 13 years this year. I've been with them. Phenomenal company. Puts God first. We get to pray before and after each meeting, which is very uncommon in the secular world these days. So um, for that and a whole lot of reasons, uh, I've just loved being a part of this organization. And uh, um, it, yeah, it gives me opportunity. I can pray with my employees, which again, very uncommon. Um, and uh, I can share the word of God without hesitation or fail. I can post, you know, any, any scriptures that I want, I can put scripture billboards on the walls, which I did and have done. Um, and so, yeah, you know, it, it, the way the world is today to be able to work for somebody that allows you to celebrate a relationship with God is very uncommon. So I uh, plan on sticking it out as long as they'll have me. That's a, that's a, a big game changer to, to work in that kind of environment. That's for sure. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. And on, on, on the ministry side, uh, I was uh, I, I was given the opportunity to become an associate pastor back in 2008. Um, my wife and I, um, I, I don't know how far you want me to go into the story, but we both had epic failures before we met each other. And we knew that, um, you know, I felt like I was given the first marriage my best and failed miserably so just giving the second relationship my best i knew was not going to change anything unless i changed my best 
So we made individual commitments before we uh, really got too actively involved with each other uh, that we were going to change our best and uh, and be patient with one another through that process. And so uh, I saw some some personal counseling. She sought some personal counseling. I began to dig a little bit into, you know, what was contributing to my failures so that I could make some adjustments and changes. And together, we started doing stuff um, that built into our, our marriage. And then once we were married, we, we began to go to marriage conferences and just really wanted to, we both had horrible examples. So we just wanted to um, do something to impact the marriages around us because we were seeing a lot of people on the same path we were on. And I will tell you, there is any, anybody that says that divorce is easy or um, that there's not long-term uh, repercussions from it just doesn't understand it and has been deceived. And so our passion then became helping people to not go down the path we went down and to save them the hurt and the heartache that we experienced. Um, divorce was so prominent in Oklahoma that in Tulsa, Oklahoma, we actually, we had a higher divorce rate than uh, even Las Vegas, if you can imagine that. So um, we had some outside sources come into our state to help address the overwhelming divorce rate that was happening. And they, they created a, a, what was called the Oklahoma Marriage Initiative um, and began to um, build trainers. And so my wife and I became marriage trainers through the Oklahoma Marriage Initiative and again, just more tools in our toolbox that we could share with others and, uh, and grow this passion that we had to just help people not have this same hurtful, harmful experience that we had. Um, and, you know, again, I think a lot of people in marriage, Hank, are giving it their best. They're, it's just that their best is based off of some really poor examples. It's based off of lack of understanding. Um, and, and uh, it's also based on what the world tells you is, you know, acceptable or not in relationships. And so we have found over the last 12, 13 years, the couples that we have sat down with, um, that most of them, when they're given these tools, um, come out the other end, not just successful, but thriving, uh, which says to me that it's not necessarily about the two people as, as much as it is as the what the two people know and and what they're willing to do to make their marriage work so yeah dude it's a passion for us um i love i love to see couples that get off of the path that we were on and get onto a path of strong enriched godly marriages um that that truly are able to do what they promised that they would do in the very beginning uh, and do it enthusiastically, not out of obligation or law, but out of love um, and, and, and excitement for one another and excitement for God. And uh, a good segue into just kind of speaking a little bit about your uh, your breakout session at the at the conference. What is your your topic and, and just a little teaser about what that's going to be about? Yeah, so um, I, I don't know that I have a title. Uh, just yet, I'm not. I'm not real big on titles. Uh, the, the the whole idea is that um, we, as men in marriages, want to be the king of our castle, and it's we think that just because we're the male in a in a male female marriage that that makes us the king, and that's just not how kingship works. So what I want to do is give men the tools to not only that they can earn the crown, that they can earn their seat as the king, but they can also build up their queen and treat her like a queen and not treat her like a servant in his castle. Um, and so we're, we're just going to spend some time uh, helping men understand what it takes to become a, a, a true king of their home, a true king of their castle, and not just feel like that just because I'm the man of the house that that makes me the king of the house well it makes you the man of the house it makes you the male figure in the house uh but kingship if we go back and look at you know even David if you look at what David went through before he was he became king um he was doing work in the fields with goats long even but even before he was slinging rocks at giants and, and God began to work in him and to work through him. But David did a lot of work before he was he became king. And he had a lot of opposition. He had to fight a lot of battles. He even had to slay men, right? It, it, and, and at some point, then he becomes the king. And I, I just feel like that men, 
um, want to have that, you know, I've, I've got to have my man cave. I got to, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I, I got to have what's mine. I want, I want the toys that I want to have. And if you tell me no, well, you don't understand. I'm the leader of this home and I get what I want. And that's just not how it works. Um, so again, I want to equip men to not, not deny the opportunity to be, to become a king, but to understand the work involved so that they, when they earn that crown, when they earn that title, it means something because I could call you a king right now and put a crown on your head. I could, I could hand you uh, uh, an illustration I'm going to use on, a, one, on Monday morning is I see guys all the time that take pictures with a uh, Heisman trophy, right? They just stand there and they get a picture with it, which is really cool. It makes for a great picture, but it doesn't mean anything, right? It, the, the trophy only means something when you earn the trophy. So you can stand there and take a picture with it. You can hold it up over your head and you can feel like, oh yeah, boom, Heisman trophy. It means nothing because it's just, it's just a piece of metal and wood for somebody that didn't earn it. But for the guy that earns it, man, that's, that's a significant and important thing. And so, you know, you can go out into your shop and forge yourself a crown and put it on your head and call yourself king, but it doesn't mean anything. It has no meaning. So what we, what I want to unpack at, uh, at the conference is letting men, um, truly understand the work that's involved and and value the work that's involved and do the work so that when they put that crown on their head or when their bride puts that crown on their head it has value it has meaning um and part of being a king is treating our bride like a queen and not treating her like a servant and that's that's an awesome word not only for for married men but but single men that may be considering you know looking for a mate it is also good information to to have so that you don't make those mistakes in the first place because we all know that you know half of any any successful operation is in the planning um, so i mean Absolutely. yeah that's it's definitely an awesome it's the hardest the hardest thing i think about this conference is not going to be you know it's, it's picking which breakout session to go to because they've all got such great topics and and and, and everybody is such great speakers. And I know, like I said, that you know, you've spoken a lot of a truth into my life and, and helped me to become, you know, who I am today. And I appreciate it. And I appreciate your time this morning, bro. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you, man. I, I you know, even as the, having the, the humble privilege of being able to be a breakout speaker, I'm looking at the list and going, man, uh, it, what would happen if I skip my own and go listen to somebody else because there's some really good breakouts so uh, hopefully you guys will have a way to record some of that stuff so that for those that you know it's hard time picking that they can they can choose one and, and then catch up on the other one because there's gonna man I'll tell you what you guys have a list of absolute all-stars for this conference I'm excited uh looking forward to not only the the key speakers um but some of these breakouts sessions are just i believe going to be life-changing as well i think god's definitely already moving uh in a big way just just putting things together and putting things in place and you know it's it's like watching some awesome epic you know unfold and you see the little easter eggs as to what's coming you know and then oh well, what what's what's going to happen next you know and then you know the the build-up is almost as exciting as the actual event i think the actual event is going to be something special Thanks again yeah, for your time absolutely. and uh, we look forward to seeing you. Yeah, absolutely. Look forward to seeing you guys. God bless you. And uh, let's do this thing.